Whether it be climate change, a widening diplomatic rift paving way for an increasingly bipolar world, the immediate worry of runaway inflation, or a looming global recession, the world is looking to New Delhi for answers, support, and guidance. Let's dive deeper and take a closer look at India's increasing role in global dynamics and understand how and why the booming Brand India model is being lauded world over. As India gears up for the G20 presidency in just over a month from now, observers are anticipating a significant shift in the policy framework and decisions that have largely proven inadequate and ineffective in recent times. The failure of this mechanism in international diplomacy is all too clear, with the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war going from bad to worse, and the resulting economic and diplomatic fallouts for all to see. A number of countries around the world are struggling with skyrocketing debt, with no immediate resolutions in sight. With export indices falling and foreign reserves depleting, several countries are on the verge of defaulting on their loans and face dire shortages of essential fuel supplies. In South Asia alone, as many as three countries, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Pakistan have been appealing to the global financing body, the IMF, for urgent assistance. India, however, has proven its economic resilience through the grim pandemic wave and the downturn that followed. India is now being viewed as a model to be emulated by all. United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres recently urged New Delhi to mobilize G20 nations to assist those developing countries who are saddled with debt. And I count on India's support in mobilizing G20 countries around debt relief. Many developing countries are at or near debt distress and require multilateral action, including the expansion and the extension of the G20 Debt Service Suspension Initiative. The IMF's World Economic Outlook estimated that worldwide inflation will be 8.8% in the 2022 fiscal year. Pakistan and Bangladesh, however, are currently grappling with historically high rates of inflation at nearly 20% and 10%, respectively. Inflation in the island nation of Sri Lanka touched the record mark of over 73% last week. While its neighbors struggle, India's timely macroeconomic interventions and structural reforms have not only assisted in containing inflation by improving productivity, but have also propelled the country to the fifth largest economy in the world. Indian monetary policy has stayed on course to restore price stability and has by and large alleviated cost of living pressures. India has been among the best performers when it has come to containing inflation. Despite dealing with inflation, India was also able to keep their welfare programs on track. From then till today we continue the free food grain program for 80 crore Indian citizens. Because of prudent and forward-thinking economic decisions in the last few years, India is now in a position where it can not only meet demands for its own vast population, but can also help those countries in distress. India's economic model was recently praised by the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. My feeling is that instead of subsidizing, subsidizing things, it is necessary to subsidize people. And India has today one of the most expanded programs of uh, social welfare in the world, providing hundreds of millions of families with financial support. Looking back on recent global events, we see that India has established itself as one of the key players in world geopolitics. India has garnered praise world over, from the IMF and the United Nations to wealthy and underdeveloped countries alike. 
India's holistic approach for development has not only benefited its citizens, but has also benefited the interests of the larger global community. Observers speculate that India will continue to be a critical player in global geopolitics. The brand India model of economics, diplomacy and dialogue, and climate change will be an example for countries world over. India's defense indigenization push continues to show positive trends. The government remains keen to further develop and export more defense equipment in light of the growing demand in the face of rapidly shifting global dynamics. Until only a few years ago, India was unable to meet its own defense needs. In fact, India remained heavily dependent on imported weapons and for decades had been one of the world's largest arms importers. Times are changing for India, however. For example, the Indian Air Force and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited recently entered into a contract for the development of 70 HTT-40 indigenous trainer aircrafts. Tejas, India's cutting-edge fourth-generation fighter aircraft, has also been the subject of defense negotiations with a number of nations. Argentina is one of the many key countries considering purchasing the Indian fighter jet to advance their military prowess. Tejas was high on the agenda when Jai Shankar met with Argentine's Defense Minister Jorge Tayana and the Secretary for Strategic Affairs Mercedes Marco del Pont in the Argentine capital in August this year. Several other countries have also stated their willingness to buy Made in India defense equipment. India has already signed a monumental deal selling supersonic cruise missiles to the Philippines. A testimony to India's defense manufacturing capability, over 300 memorandums of understandings and scores of transfer of technology agreements were recently signed in India's Gandhinagar city, where the Biennial Defense Expo, the country's flagship defense exhibition, was held. India, an emerging defense manufacturing hub, has set a target of 5 billion USD for its defense exports and an overall turnover of 22 billion USD in production by 2025. Defense indigenization has also received a boost from the government's decision to involve the private sector. Private manufacturers are eager and prepared to increase output for both domestic and international markets. As far as Indian content in all of our systems is concerned, 100% in terms of design, we own all the intellectual property. We have patents applied for on our weapon systems. Uh, as far as local content is concerned, we are almost hitting the 85% mark in terms of uh, cost. India maintains that it is committed to developing a conducive defense manufacturing atmosphere, which will push India towards complete self-reliance in the coming days. In May, the government published the Positive Indigenization List, a list of 108 defense items to be procured from Indigenous sources. These lists are being updated constantly, and they give the Indian defense industry an incentive to invest in research and development to produce Made in India products that would be bought by the armed forces. These lists also mean an automatic ban on the import of these items as priority is given to local industries to scale up their production facilities to manufacture these items. This policy is a major thrust of Prime Minister Modi's at Manirbar, or Self-Reliance Pledge. On October 15, 2021, Prime Minister Narendra Modi dedicated the seven defense public sector undertakings created through the restructuring of the Ordnance Factory Board to improve functional autonomy, efficiency, growth potential, and innovation in the defense sector. We are very proud of the fact that India is going into self-reliance, Atmanirbhar Bharat, and uh, a flagship thing that HAL has already given to the uh, nation, which is Prachand. The Government of India changed the automatic route limit for foreign direct investment in the defence sector to 74% from the earlier restrictive foreign investment caps. 
According to the government, this will improve national security, product design independence, investments, income, and aid in job creation. With the China-Pakistan axis expanding its military cooperation, India must continue to be prepared and expand its defense manufacturing capability. Defense has previously been one of the few industries in which India lagged. However, with its sights set on the defense manufacturing and exporting arena, and the indigenization push paying off, this will soon be one more area in which Brand India leads.